Isaiah Thomas still won't let go of his rivalry with MJ. More than two years have passed since Netflix aired the docuseries about Michael Jordan's historic final championship with the Chicago Bulls. Despite this, the Detroit Pistons icon is still clearly salty about how he was portrayed in The Last Dance. Today, let's talk about how Isaiah calls out Michael Jordan. First, let's talk about Zeke's comments about MJ's documentary. It's pretty clear by now that Isaiah Thomas will not leave his beef with Jordan in the 90s. The Detroit Pistons legend gave an interview to Cosmo TV in early October. While Thomas had a lot to talk about, one thing he seemingly got stuck on was the way his relationship with his airness was portrayed in Jordan's documentary. Both Thomas and Jordan were fierce competitors, as were the Pistons and the Bulls. This rivalry was visited in several episodes of the 10-part docuseries. In much to Zeke's displeasure, he was portrayed as the antagonist for the most part. But given that this was Jordan's documentary, this was not surprising. Thomas has made it absolutely clear that he expects an apology from MJ for the things he said about him in the documentary. The Hall of Fame point guard also went on to state that the beef between himself and the Bulls legend will not end until this happens. Yeah, good luck trying to get an apology out of MJ, Zeke. But we're guessing Thomas already knows that. Winning championships don't matter. That don't count. And you're going to discount that? Uh, and if you're going he probably doesn't actually expect Jordan to say he's sorry and is only saying this to get under his skin. Next up, Thomas calls out Jordan for being a hypocrite. Isaiah then went on to claim that MJ was actually a hypocrite for portraying him as an documentary. The NBA legend claimed that he started watching the series with his family and was actually surprised at how good it was. Well, that was until Jordan popped up on screen and opened fire. Thomas claims he was shocked at how MJ talked about him. And honestly, we get it. The Bulls legend did kind of go overboard while talking about how much he despises Isaiah and kept calling him an <laughs> Zeke retaliated to these comments by saying that Jordan can call him an ass once, but the only person the documentary makes out as one is him. Ouch. Moving on. But why did MJ call that in the first place? According to Thomas, the turning point in their relationship came when the Pistons walked off the court without shaking hands after the Bulls swept them in the Eastern Conference Finals in 1991. They're cheering here for the Bulls right now, and the Pistons as they leave the court. I don't think they're cheering for the Bulls, but... Uh... Detroit dominated the boys in red for much of the late 80s, but the proverbial torch was finally passed when the Bulls swept the Pistons in the Eastern Conference Finals in 1991. The problem is, in the final game of that series, many Pistons, including Isaiah Thomas, walked off the court without shaking hands while there was still time on the clock, which clearly irritated Jordan, and he definitely didn't hold back when discussing his disappointment with Zeke in the Netflix series. Jordan saw the snub as a sign of disrespect and has held a grudge against Thomas for decades. In fact, MJ took it so hard that he even chastised Thomas for it during his Hall of Fame induction speech in 2009. Thomas explains that the walk-off was simply part of the basketball culture at that time, dating back to Detroit's previous playoff series with Larry Bird's Boston Celtics. But Jordan has stated on multiple occasions that he's just not buying that. When a producer asked Jordan for comments on the matter, he said he wasn't interested in Thomas's explanation before referring to him as an a-hole. says now, you know it wasn't his true actions then. You know, it's time enough to think about it. Or the reaction of the public that's kind of changed his perspective of it. And now, Thomas has appeared to return the favor with his recent remarks. Now, let's get a little more into the documentary that's stirring up all this drama. While Isaiah Thomas may have you believe otherwise, the documentary was more than just Jordan disrespecting him. The 10-part documentary largely celebrated Jordan's on-court greatness. Sure, there were times when he didn't come across in the best light, but most of the series was focused on his incredible career. But then again, can you really even talk about MJ's career without bringing up the controversies? Whether it was Jordan chewing out his teammates or punching Steve Kerr, this man was hell to deal with on the court, and a lot of this was highlighted in the docuseries. But among Jordan's many unsavory moments, one thing that really stuck out was his attitude towards the rivalry between the Detroit Pistons and the Chicago Bulls. After all, Jordan's Bulls lost to Thomas's Pistons in the second round of the 1988 playoffs, as well as the 1989 and 1990 East Conference Finals. The Pistons were on a hot streak back then. Guarded by Lane Beer. Jordan gets a tough pass. And MJ was usually on the receiving end of their dirty tactics. Surprisingly, Jordan credited the Pistons' style during the last dance and explained that it motivated him to add strength and change his own approach to the game. Coming up, let's look at the timeline of the rivalry. The Jordan-Thomas rivalry has been going on for three decades. There's so much history here that it's almost impossible to piece it all together, but we're still giving it a shot. First things first, it all started with a bad impression. You know what they say, the first impression's the last one. Only epitomized by the Detroit Pistons and Chicago Chicago Bulls. 
en route to their five consecutive. Well, it seems like MJ took this saying a little too literally. Michael Jordan was tearing it up as a rookie in 1984 and 1985, averaging 28.2 points, 6.5 rebounds, 5.9 assists, and 2.4 steals per game. As a result, he was chosen to play in his first All-Star game that season. If Jordan is to be believed, his first meeting with a Detroit Pistons legend was anything but cordial. Jordan admitted in 1992 that as the Chicago Bulls' sole representative on the Eastern Conference All-Star team that season, he didn't socialize much and spent most of his free time in his hotel room. But when he did finally venture out, he found himself on the same elevator as Thomas. Jordan claims he asked Thomas how he was, but the Zeke didn't give him much of an answer. MJ explained that he got really intimidated since he was only a rookie, and Thomas was already on the path to becoming a legend at that point. He stayed quiet for the remainder of the weekend, because he didn't want to get on anyone's nerves. Well, apparently the story got spun around, and after the weekend was over, it got back to MJ that he was arrogant and cocky. It wouldn't speak to Isaiah on the elevator. To this day, Jordan maintains that Thomas initiated it all and spread the rumors about him being arrogant. Moving on to the 1985 freezeout, Jordan started for the Eastern Conference All-Stars in the 1985 NBA All-Star Game, alongside four other future Hall of Famers, Moses Malone, Larry Bird, Julius Irving, and Isaiah Thomas. In a somewhat surprising outturn, MJ was the least impressive of the five when it was all said and done, scoring only seven points on two for nine shooting as the East fell to the West 140 to 129. Stats from the All-Star Game are arguably irrelevant because they do not count toward regular season averages. However, All-Star success can also be seen as bragging rights, and Jordan has long claimed that Thomas refused to pass the ball to him. He told the press that this was the exact thing that sparked their bitter rivalry. Thomas, on the other hand, has repeatedly denied this, and as recently as July of 2022, he put out a tweet to refute MJ's claims. Stop lying. This story is not factual or accurate, man, Thomas wrote. No matter whose story you believe, it's pretty clear that the alleged freeze-out is when things started to get from bad to ugly. And this brings us to MJ's revenge. Following the infamous walkout, the Chicago Bulls advanced to the 1991 NBA Finals, where they defeated the Los Angeles Lakers in five games to win their first of six championships. That year, MJ was named Finals MVP, and anyone who thought he wasn't the best player in the game before was left biting the dust, because that wasn't a question any longer. Jordan was at the peak of his power that summer, when Rod Thorne of the U.S. Olympic Selection Committee approached and asked him to participate in next year's Olympics in Barcelona. He called up Jordan to see if he would agree. And well, whatever happened on that call or in the months that followed, we don't know. But somehow, Isaiah Thomas was suddenly taken out of consideration for the 1992 Olympic team once MJ hopped on board. This was a time without the internet or social media, but even then, Isaiah's exclusion from that team went viral. It was a complete shock, and committee members resigned over it. Let's talk about the receipts. Anyone who followed the NBA back then knew there had to be more to the story than simply not selecting Isaiah for the team. Everyone suspected it was Michael Jordan's retaliation, and that's all we've had for nearly 30 years. Assumptions, anonymous sources, and rumors. And Jordan denied any involvement in Isaiah's exclusion from the team all this time. And a lot of people believed it. Well, until he was quoted in Jack McCall. 2012 book, Dream Team book, as saying he wouldn't play on the team if Isaiah Thomas was on it, but for whatever reason, that quote is still widely believed to be a rumor. Finally, when will this end? After all that's gone down, the backstabbing, the bitter words, the political maneuvering, we honestly think this rivalry will never end. If anything, it's only going to get worse. Alright, what's your take on this rivalry? Let us know in the comments below. Make sure to like, share, and subscribe. See ya!